how you've clicked on to today's video, I guess, for Monday, December 3rd. I can't really call this a tropical tidbit because it's not a tropics video. Uh, but here we are, beginning of December. The hurricane season in the Atlantic is over. And uh, as usually happens this time of year, I get a little bit bored. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the upcoming winter for the United States, as there are a lot of interesting factors involved this year, some very conflicting, that are making for a very interesting forecast and a diverse pool of opinions amongst the forecasting world. So getting into it here, starting off with the sea surface temperature anomaly map, which is usually a good place to start, as uh, we know that large bodies of water lose heat much slower than land and tend to retain their profile throughout the winter and by the time we end up in early December here uh, what the anomaly profile looks like now generally stays about the same throughout most of the winter and uh, that usually ends up affecting the air above the water and in turn starts affecting the weather pat patterns over the continents straight off we notice uh, something contrasting to the last few years we have a much more mellow uh, Enzo signature uh, it's a almost El Nino but not quite it's a warm biased neutral that hasn't quite passed the El Nino threshold but it's hovering just below it this is in contrast to the strong El Nino's or strong La Nina's we've had for the past few years that have really dominated the winter pattern in the northern hemisphere but we now have a more neutral look and uh, this is opening the door for other things to start affecting the North American pattern during the winter. Normally a neutral Enzo or a weak warm signal generally favors a cold winter over the eastern part of North America because it strengthens the subtropical jet and allows troughing to dive in over the country. However we have a contrasting signature immediately to the north in that we still have a negative PDO, Pacific Decadal Oscillation, shown with these cold anomalies in the eastern part of the Pacific with warm anomalies east of Japan. This generally promotes troughing over Alaska and western Canada, which allows cold air uh, to build here and pumps the ridge to the southeast and ends up in more of a warmer winter for the eastern part of the U.S., and this is in conflict with the equatorial signature and this only happens rarely it's only happened about four times in the last seventy years and we'll see that in the analog package but there are many other things to note besides the PDO and the ENZO on this map. One is namely the Atlantic pattern, which is very interesting now because we've seen a switch from the middle of the hurricane season in that most of the warm water is now found in the tropical Atlantic as opposed to farther north as it was during the season. And now notice the cool signature starting to show up in the mid-latitude belt with cold to neutral water showing up from Florida all the way to Europe. And then there's warm water to the south of Greenland. And this is the classic positive Atlantic tripole signature, which we saw during 2009 and 2010 and this kind of setup really hints at the jet stream trying to creep southward here due to the cooler water and uh, have blocking develop over the top which really hints at a cooler shot of winter for the eastern part of the United States is usually where that goes because it promotes a negative NAO up here with the blocking and the cooler water indicates a southerly storm track coming through here and this is what we saw a couple of winters ago and we know how bad that winter was there's also another interesting thing to notice on the other side of the world here. Look at the Indian Ocean getting warm here. I actually plotted it out, and since July, this is from July 1st to November 20th, the Reynolds climatology, we've gone from about 0.2 above normal uh, to 0.6 above normal on a steady increase here, and uh, the heat content has really started to go up. And uh, this is really interesting because this produces an analogous relationship to what the equatorial Pacific does in that as the water warms, uh, convection increases and helps strengthen the subtropical jet coming out over the southwestern Pacific and this can help generate troughiness over the Far East and near Japan similar to how the El Nino can uh, generate troughiness over the southeastern United States. The analog is very strong there and to notice this is actually supported by the fact that we have cold water developing south of Japan with warm water to the north very analogous to the setup that we're uh, seeing in the Atlantic with warm water to the north and cold water trying to develop under underneath setting up the blocking pattern and with the cold PDO here in the Pacific what it does is it tries to set up a lot of heavy blocking over Siberia and Alaska and remember these two areas geographically uh, Greenland and the North Pacific are not that far away from each other this map is actually distorted latitude longitude maps uh, in the polar regions and these are actually fairly close by and when you develop this much blocking uh, that uh, this pattern favors over the North Pacific it tends to hinder the blocking that occurs over here so as similar as these two ocean patterns are uh, near Japan and off the eastern seaboard of the United States they actually don't work very well together and if one is dominant the other tends to be 
suppressed and that's what we'll see here in a little bit on the models actually here's the 500 millibar uh, anomaly forecast for December to February and I averaged the five models uh, of the CMC, the Canadian, the CFS version 2, the European, the UK Met, and the JMA, the Japanese model. Those glo global models, all five of them, uh, were the average for this plot. And notice a very strong overwhelming signal for blocking over the Aleutians like we talked about uh, that is supported strongly by the current SST profile. And this is showing up on all of the models here. Very strong ridging over the Aleutians. And look at the troughiness developing underneath near Japan. And I think this is very important for this winter given that this is supported by the current state of the Pacific and the warming Indian Ocean. And this is crucial because it means that this block is more expansive and far to the north. And uh, notice over here we have a lack of blocking. In fact there's even negative anomalies showing up over Hudson Bay and this is not exactly what we would expect given the recent warming trend in the Arctic and the trend negative with the Arctic and uh, North Atlantic oscillations uh, should usually mean blocking for most of the winters and in the recent winters we have indeed had blocking except for last year and uh, I would expect some blocking but it may not be uh, semi-permanent the way it has been and that's probably what the models are seeing here is that it's going to be more transient because of the blocking here again this isn't too far away you can see uh, the wave pattern where you get a positive here negative to the east and then you get a negative in the uh, subtropical latitudes and then a positive to the east and you see the ridging showing up in the southern United States and this is a very interesting pattern um, because of all the competing uh, factors involved. The Nino down here that's trying to lower heights here but is getting beaten out by the stronger cold PDO which lowers heights in western Canada and in fact the model showing even eastern Canada here and then the Indian Ocean inducing the negative western Pacific oscillation which is basically the analog to the NAL where you get blocking to the north and uh, basically the winter gets stolen from the United States and taken over to the far east in this picture here. Now here's the analog package for this winter and what I did is I took winters where we had a negative PDO minus 0.5 or lower and a positive ENZO 0.5 or higher and this has only happened four times since 1948. <clears throat> we can see the winters here involved were 51, 52, 53, 54, 68, 69, and 94, 95. All of these winters had those conflicting signals and it's very evident. Look at the major trough that was developed over Alaska and Western Canada at the time indicates the overwhelmingly dominant cold PDO signal. Despite the El Nino's present during these years, it was the PDO that won out. And uh, I keep stressing this uh, over the last couple of years, the PDO is very capable of overwhelming most climate signals during the winter period, namely because it has such a strong effect on the long wave pattern in the mid-latitudes, stronger than the El Nino has uh, during the winter period. And when the, the PDO is in um, is not in the same phase as the Enzo, which doesn't happen that often. They usually coincide together, but when they disagree, it is usually the PDO that wins. The one year, and actually you can see here the warmth that showed up, despite the blocking, by the way, notice the blocking south of Greenland here, and we had a nice negative NAO or west based NAO going here, and yet it wasn't cold. Notice the break between the troughs here. It's really hard for the jet stream to dip all the way to the south because it has to conserve angular momentum and so it generally has to curve back to the north um, a bit faster than that so you get a wave pattern more like this as opposed to a cold shot that comes straight to the southeast and that's why it was actually warm during these years despite the blocking. And actually the coldest year was the winter of 68-69 where we actually did get some spillage of Arctic air into the eastern U.S. over the December to February period. But these, this first blue shade is only one degree Celsius below climatology and this really wasn't that bad of a winter. You see all the blocking to the north and what really happened is most of the cold you can see is bottled up in western Canada, typical of the negative PDL, but it was this blocking that allowed some of it to slip southeast. Periodic Arctic outbreaks breaking the warm pattern and allowing the over overall winter temperature uh, to end up a little bit colder than normal and probably some additional snow as well and I think this is actually more of the worst case scenario for this winter given the dominance of the PDO in situations like this I don't see it getting much colder than this what I see is a situation similar to this where we get some blocking but it's not permanent and we allow periodic cold shots to come in and break the pattern like happened during this particular year but remember in all the other years where the PDO and the ENZO disagreed it was the warm signal that flooded um, the southeast and northeast with basically a non-winter uh, whenever this happened.
And here's the model forecast for the temperature. This, these are the same models as I showed you back here with the 500 millibar pattern. This is the resulting temperature showing, again, cold over western Canada as we expect, almost a given for this type of a winter. And uh, then you see the warmth in the southwest, but it's pretty neutral in the eastern part of the United States. And I really like this idea, the fact that we still have warm water here, so there is going to be blocking, but it's going to be suppressed at times by the fact that we have a lot of blocking over the North Pacific, as you saw back here, due again to the fact that the Western Pacific sea surface temperature profile and the warming Indian Ocean supports a stronger jet in here, which means more troughing over Japan and a massive block due to the PDO also supporting this over Siberia, dumping cold air into Alaska and Western Canada. And this is going to help this ridge to make comebacks despite the little warm Nino that we have down here trying to drag the jet down. It's not going to be enough because I think the PDO overwarms that signal overwhelms that signal and we end up with kind of a balance because we we get what wants to be a warm pattern in here where uh, the cold air and the troughiness of here tries to drive the jet stream across the country but then we also have blocking that tends to show up here due to the warm arctic water and uh, the Greenland block shows up and allows some of this cold air to sneak down into the eastern United States perhaps even frequently and this could result in snowstorms and perhaps even above normal snowfall in some of these areas even though the temperature may be about normal if not slightly warmer than normal in some areas uh, the transient storms will break the pattern and cold arc cold outbreaks will follow behind and this is the kind of thing that it that I expect for this winter. These models have not been on board with this until just recently. I've been talking for the last three months about the PDO and the ENSO relationship and how the PDO is usually dominant. The models have gone back and forth from very cold to very warm and uh, I think they found a good balance that I really am in agreement with now and I've been talking about for a while and this is the general idea that I think will occur. We get cold building uh, to the north into Canada. We get the warm southwestern U.S. as we would expect. And then the east is about neutral overall throughout the winter, but it's a very dynamic part of the country with um, frequent exchanges between warm and cold and uh, lots of storm in due to the battleground zone that sets up in here between warmth to the south and cold coming down from the north should set up a good storm track and could result in slightly above normal snowfall in some of these areas with frequent flips uh, between warm and cold patterns so a fairly dynamic winter coming up and um, We'll see how this turns out. It's going to be a difficult balance to make, but I think with all the model support that we're getting now, this is a good idea to go with given the current situation around the globe and how the pattern is evolving. It's our first neutral winter in a while, so we'll see how this goes, um, but I do believe that this is going to be a little bit warmer than some of the forecasts I've seen. A lot of forecasts have had a lot of cold showing up in here because of the near El Nino that we are in, a uh, neutral to warm bias, and that yes, the, that does happen, but not when the PDO is negative. As I showed you, the analogs just do not support some overwhelming cold. When the PDO and the ENSO disagree, the PDO wins the battle most of the time, so I think it will be more of a balance this year given the factors that we are seeing. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.